Hi there, YouTube. I'm back again today for another game review. Today I'm very excited to check out Cahoots from Mayday Games. This is for three or four players. Take about 20 to 30 minutes to play. It's for ages 12 plus. And in Cahoots, this is a trick-taking esque game where you're going to get a handful of multicolored different suited cards you're going to be playing those down and you're going to try to make it so that one of your three scoring suits uh, has the most points at the end because you will score points each and every round based on who has the most but the real interesting aspect of this game is after everyone's played their cards so you're going to play two cards each round everyone at the table then gets an opportunity to kill one of the cards at the table and keep one of the cards at this table in this very interesting genre bending trick taking game but is it worth recommending let's open it up and i'll tell you what i think all right then we're gonna take a look at what you're gonna get inside of cahoots so first and foremost we have a handy dandy rule booklet seven pages double-sided full color full of pictures illustrations very well done should have you up and running up and running in no time at all and most of the time you're just going to need the scoring section right here for when you have ties but big thumbs up on the rule booklet. Easy to learn, easy to teach. So in Cahoots, what's going to happen is you're going to be playing down one of these six suits of cards and hoping that your suit has the highest score after two go-arounds at the table. Your suits are going to be these three suits in front of you. Now, interestingly enough, everyone is going to have three different suits, but you will always match one of your suits with at least one other person. So black and black, blue and blue for us, and purple and purple for them. If you're playing a three-player one, you're going to match with the other, every other player, but you're also going to then have one that is your own suit, which you can score a whole bunch of points if you do it. But let's Let's go ahead and show you how the game plays. So when you start up the game, we're going to shuffle up all the cards and deal them all out evenly. Unless, of course, you're playing three players and then you take out, I think, a couple specific cards, which I don't remember off the top of my head. Now, starting with whoever has this first player card, and this will pass around the table, the first player is going to play down any card they would like. The numbers are between four and eight, with there being only one eight and one four when you're playing the game. So let's see. What am I? Purple, pink, purple, or purple, blue, black. So I got a lot of cards I don't really need. So let's just start getting rid of some of those cards. So I might play this green five right here. Now this is not your trick taking game in a typical sense where you have to follow suit. No, this person can play anything they want. So they're looking at their hand and they're like, wow, that's a great opportunity for me. But here's the thing, I only have one blue. And I need blue, which kind of stinks, or green, which kind of stinks. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to I'm going to play a blue five because no matter what happens, green or blue, most likely I'm going to be happen, happy with it, whatever happens here. So the next person goes. They uh, they do like green. So you know what? They would probably realistically play this big old splat now. They'll probably save the eight. And I'll tell you why in a second. And play their green seven. So they lay down the green seven, and now green is taken control with 12. This person over here has nothing in the fight. They do not like blue. They do not like green. And at this point, they might just say, you know what? Let's just make it interesting, I guess. No, what they would probably do is they would probably lock it up. They'd probably put another green seven right here. And I'll explain that why in a little bit later. So at seeing this, I'm looking down here. I'm like, all right, my blues... The ship has probably set sail on my blue, so you know what I'm going to do? I'm also going to get rid of one of the six green. And six at this point is probably just going to steamroll everything. Uh, because you do go around twice, as I mentioned. So this person now, looking at their hand, is looking at it a little bit differently. Because they probably just want to get rid of cards that are bad for them. So blue, uh, they'll get rid of this five purple. And then this person right here will get rid of this... Uh, yeah, they probably get rid of this four purple. Or maybe they get rid of the seven purple. Hmm. Yeah, let's get rid of the seven purple so it's not in their hand anymore. And then this person sitting over here is like, did 12 kids, did purple catch up? No, 12, purple's still at 12. Green's the only thing that's going to win. If they have a green, they will definitely play a green. So now we're going to score points. So we'll just take note of who scores points. Green has won by a mile because whoever has the most here is going to win. Uh, so that means this character, this player is going to get two points, and this player is going to get two points. But before we do that, we do something called the kill-keep phase. So starting with the first player, you are going to get the option to either kill or keep one of these. And you're going to end up doing both of them. So I'm looking at my hand right now, and this 
purple sevens over here. That's a really, really, really nice one. So you know what? I'm actually going to add, I'm going to keep this purple seven. So I'll just put it right here. I'm going to keep this card. This person's looking over here. Uh, they have got to save some of these greens because what's going to happen is a lot of these greens are going to die now, which is why everybody kind of, you know, just kind of put them all down there. So you know what? I'm holding on to the seven. And because this guy's now, this is where Cahoots comes into play because it's a lot about talking to other people and be like, hey, 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 you got to take that other green, man. Take that other green because or else our greens are pretty much all dead, which they would be right. So they would probably take the seven. This person would probably look at this and say, I don't want any of this hot garbage. I'm going to take the five. Now, he could kill if he wanted to because, uh, like I said, you can keep or kill, but he's probably just going to keep that. And then all four of these cards are out of the game. So this is why it's important uh, when you play certain cards because... All these three greens are out of the game, and this blue five are out of the game. So this guy's like, heck yeah, all four of those are out of the game. He's happy. I'm pretty happy because the three greens are out of the game. But now, you take the card you keep, you put it back into your hand, and then the first player marker moves over here. Actually, sorry, made one minor mistake there. The, the cards that got killed now are handed out as points for the other two people. So these two people scored, so they would just put these face up in front of them, uh, so you can tell that two cards have been killed, and that's how you do it. You're going to rinse, wash, repeat, and do that until eventually, uh, before you get to the kill-keep phase, you have zero cards in your hand. Once that happens, you're going to total up the entire score, and whoever has the most points will be the winner of Cahoots. And that, in a nutshell, is how the game is played. All right, then, Cahoots from Mayday Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's cover the pros, let's cover the cons. First, on the con side, game's not going to be for everybody for a variety of different reasons. Three to four players. That is a very restrictive player count. Also, it is a very simple, for the most part, trick-taking game. Uh, while it is very interesting type of trick-taking where you don't have to follow lead and you get to keep cards and kill cards, and if it, you mean if you're the first player, then you might play out your biggest card you have in your entire hand, like your big star card, and it doesn't really matter because you know you're going to get that card back no matter what. Uh, so turn order really does matter in this game, which might be a turn off some people. The cards you have in your hand, you know, you can, I mean, this is your typical card game, which means if you get dealt bad cards, you get dealt bad cards. There's nothing you can really do about it. But still, that is on the con side. Also, the box is too big, and it's a small box, but what fits inside the deck, it looks like it's almost a 52-card deck, something like that. It's 48, 50, I think it's a 53-card deck. So they could have just easily put this in a tuck box. I'm assuming they chose not to because they wanted, like, the shelf presence which i've heard a lot of companies talk about you know if you put out a tuck box nobody cares if you put out a box like this people are much more likely to care though it is something that you're going to want to note that there is a lot of wasted space in the box any other cons that i have with the game you want to make sure people are kind of on an even playing field with this it reminds me a little bit of euchre that aspect where if you have people who are new to the game and people who are not new to the game the people who are new to the game are going to lose it's just pretty much that simple because they're going to know when to play specific cards. Like in the middle part, I was like, this person would obviously play these two green cards. And you're like, if you don't know what I'm talking about, like, why would this person play these two green cards? And then at the end, I was like, well, they played those two green cards because now those two green cards are most likely going to be killed off. Uh, so you want to kind of know when to overload on something, when to give up on something, where your position is at the table. So there are a couple moving parts and pieces here, which uh, you just want to make sure you're kind of on an even playing field. And that's all I got on the cons. Moving on to the pros, I really like Cahoots. I think Cahoots is a great game as long as you know that it is three to four players and it is a light, simple-ish uh, trick-taking game. So what I like about Cahoots, first and foremost, all those little mo moving parts and moving pieces and all those little choices I talked to you about that I was mentioning as cons about how you want an even playing field, I like all that. I thought all those were really interesting aspects of the game. And I noticed when I played this with the kids in my class, because I played it with the same group, I think we played it four different times, they started to catch on to each one of those by the fourth game, and that made those games just that much more interesting. And it also led to more table talk, because that's the other thing about this game, it's called Cahoots, and the game game goes off best when people are table talking when you're like hey hey you should totally kill that and then i'll kill this one or but if you don't kill this one or if you don't take this one i will leave this one and once you start getting into that aspect of the game it, even though sometimes it does feel a little bit like cheating and it can get other people down and like hey come on come, come, wait 
I'm just gonna and yeah you get some of that going on especially with pouty people or with kids uh but it really does take the game to another level which I did like a lot I mean it's called cahoots so you should be in cahoots with other people and that's always fun it's also fun where you can kind of backstab people in this game it doesn't happen terribly often especially if you do it once it's probably not gonna happen again because you'd be like hey, hey, hey you know it's a tie game right now five to five how about you play this card down I know maybe you got a green over here if I play another green we could take these greens no problem let's go ahead and do that and then you might just be like twisting that knife you're like you know what actually i think you might have more points than me so i'm gonna lay down this purple <laughs> and i like those aspects of the game they're not huge they're not pronounced they're not like backstab people it's not like on the box it's just little things you can do in the game which i really think makes this game great and sets it apart from a lot of other trick-taking games and makes it despite the fact it's got an extremely limited player count, a game that I can recommend. But there's Cahoots. If it looks like it might be your cup of tea, be sure to check this one out. And honestly, if you like trick-taking games, I definitely think this is one I would recommend you try out. It's fun. It's probably uh, definitely on the lighter price point because the box is pretty small because you're just getting the 54 cards there. But if you like trick-taking, check this one out. I enjoyed it a good deal. This is one that's going into my classroom collection for sure because the kids also liked it a lot as well. So that is Cahoots from Mayday Games. It looks like it might be your cup of tea. Be sure to check that one out. If you're enjoying what I'm doing, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below. If you want to support the channel, click on that little Amazon link down below in uh, in the, 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 the show notes thing. You click on that, you buy anything on Amazon, get the same amazing prices, but it throws a couple pennies to Bowers Game Corner. Really does help things out. And in the comments below, let me know what was the first trick-taking game you can ever remember playing. For me personally, it was I think it was um hmm I'm trying to remember if any of these mass market games are trick taking games yeah I guess they would be I guess Uno would kind of be no Uno's not a trick taking game uh I'm trying to think of the most popular at mass market trick taking game I can't think of one so I'm just gonna say Euchre I don't think it is Euchre I think there's a game that slid in there like a mass market Uno skip bow style game that's a, a trick taking game that I played before that because my granny my granny used to be all up in those games those card games back then um but for now I'm just gonna say Euchre but let me know in the comments below what is the first trick taking game you can remember playing and as always thanks for your time YouTube